Hi everyone, this is Maverick for the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss determining the pH of a salt solution. Now in ionic equilibria, sometimes we are required to determine the nature of a salt solution, whether it is acidic, neutral or alkaline. And we are also required to calculate the pH of the salt solution given certain information. So maybe let us run through an example, a very simple example talking about this salt of sodium ethanoate. So the example actually it is here. I want to calculate the pH of 0 0.500 mole per dm cube of sodium ethanoate given the Ka of ethanoic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5 mole per dm cube. Now the first thing that we will need to settle is the nature of sodium ethanoate because we know that this guy it is a salt. So what is the nature of this salt? And does it cause the solution to be acidic, neutral, or alkaline? Now the concept here actually it is under salt hydrolysis. I actually have a previous video talking about salt hydrolysis and how to deduce whether a salt is acidic, neutral, or alkaline. But let's just run through a very brief summary involving that. We actually need this concept involving conjugate acids and conjugate bases. But the dissociation of a weak acid will always give me a weak conjugate base. So therefore, ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, will dissociate to give me a weak conjugate base. So ethanoate, it is a conjugate base. Then a weak base will dissociate to give me a weak conjugate acid. So for example, ammonia, which is a weak base, on dissociation, it will give me a weak conjugate acid, NH4+. Now for strong acid on dissociation, the counter ion form, it is neutral. For example, HCl, dissociate to give me H+, and Cl-. Cl- because there's no tendency for Cl- to go back to HCl. So for Cl- in terms of nature, I think it is easier for us to say that it is neutral. Then finally for a strong base, the dissociation of a strong base will also give me a counter ion which is neutral. For example, sodium hydroxide on dissociation will give me Na+, and OH-. Na+, there's no tendency for it to go back to form NaOH, so Na+, it is also neutral. So this idea involving conjugate acids and bases is very important for us to understand the nature of the salt. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to deduce the nature of sodium ethanoate. Now sodium ethanoate, we can treat it as a salt which is a product of an acid-base reaction. So what is the acid-base reaction that will give me sodium ethanoate? CH3COO minus Na plus it is formed from the neutralization reaction between CH3COOH and sodium hydroxide. So from the nature of the acid and base that forms this salt, I can determine the nature of each of these ions. Now I think it is important for us to keep in mind, a salt is actually made up of the cation and the anion. The cation can be acidic neutral alkaline, the anion can also be acidic neutral alkaline. So we don't try to deduce the nature of the salt by looking at the whole thing. So what we will have to do is, we will have to split the salt to the cation and anion and deduce the nature of each ion independently and then we can deduce the nature of the overall salt. So if I consider CH3COO minus, CH3COO minus comes from a weak acid. So I know that a weak acid will give me a conjugate base. CH3COO minus, it is a conjugate base. Then Na plus, because it comes from sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, Na plus will be the counter ion, will be neutral. So this idea that we are applying here, actually it is as per discussed previously, a weak acid will give me a weak conjugate base, which will be here, and a strong base will give me a counter ion form that is neutral, which will be here. So now, if I know that the cation it is neutral, and the anion it is a conjugate base, obviously, this is a conjugate base, it should give me OH- in solution, so therefore the solution is expected to be alkaline, and the pH is expected to be above 7. So the concept involving salt hydrolysis will allow us to determine the nature of this salt. So up till now, what we have deduced is the salt is nothing more than a conjugate base and the pH will be above 7. So I can actually write out this explanation. CH3COO minus, it is the conjugate base of a weak acid, CH3COOH. So therefore, it will hydrolyze in solution to give me OH minus. So I have more OH minus than H plus concentration in the solution. pH will be above 7. Because sometimes the question will just tell us that I have this salt and the salt pH of the solution is alkaline or above 7, then can we explain why this is the case? We just need to write out this as the explanation and we write out the partial dissociation. Now why do I write out partial dissociation? Because we know that a conjugate base, it is a weak base. 
Now remember, in order for a system to be at equilibrium, if I have a weak acid, it must give me a weak conjugate base so that the system can be at equilibrium. If a weak acid gives me a strong conjugate base, the strong conjugate base will force the reaction to completion because strong species are fully dissociated, so therefore it is not at equilibrium. So what this means is a conjugate acid-base pair partner, both systems must be weak. Weak acid must give me a weak conjugate base. Weak base must give me a weak conjugate acid. So if a conjugate base is a weak base, then what we can do is in terms of dissociation, I just use a partial dissociation. CH3COO- plus water will dissociate to give me CH3COOH and OH-. minus. Basically, it just gains H+, plus to form back the weak acid ethanoic acid and OH minus it is dissociated. So remember this is a weak system so I have to write a reversible sign here. Now once I know that this is a weak base then in terms of determining the pH of this solution is no longer an issue of finding the pH of a salt. Now I think what some students are confused with in terms of calculating the pH of the salt is they are stuck at determining pH of salt. Now pH of salt is actually nothing more than, in this case, finding the pH of a conjugate base. And the pH of the conjugate base is nothing more than finding the pH of a weak base because a conjugate base is just a weak base. So what we will need to do is use the concepts involving salt hydrolysis to link salt to conjugate base to weak base. So what we are going to calculate is we are actually calculating the pH of a weak base we're not actually finding the pH of a salt. Or another way to say the same thing is, there's no separate method for me to calculate the pH of a salt. There's no formula for us to do that. The method for us to determine the pH of the salt for this exercise is just to determine the pH of a weak base. So moving on, the formula that we will be using will be here. This is OH minus concentration equals to square root KB times concentration of weak base. Now remember what I've highlighted here is this is the formula for me to find the pH of a weak base. This is not the formula for me to find the pH of a salt. If I know how to find the pH of ammonia, which is a weak base, then I have the concept or I have the formula to determine the pH of sodium ethanoate. Now, what we will have to do in this case is inside this question, they never give us the Kb of ethanoate. For CH3COO-, we are given the Ka of CH3COOH. So we need to do a little bit of manipulation to the Kb here, but it is not an issue, right? Because we have learned that Ka multiplied by Kb for a conjugate acid-base pair will be equal to Kw. So Ka of CH3COOH multiplied by Kb of CH3COO- is equal to Kw. Kb of CH3COO- will just be Kw divided by Ka, which I can calculate, no problem, 10 to the power of minus 14, assuming that the temperature is at standard condition, 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by Ka, which is given in this exercise, 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5. So I can determine Kb to be 5.56 times 10 to the power of minus 10. Then finally, I can substitute this back into the formula. OH minus concentration is equal to the square root of Kb times weak base concentration, or the conjugate base in this case, square root 5.56 times 10 to the power of minus 10, which is Kb. 0 0.500, which is the concentration of sodium ethanoate, and I'll get this value, 1.667 times 10 to the power of minus 5 mole per dm cube. Subsequently, I can find POH, which is minus log OH minus concentration, which is minus log 1.667 times 10 to the power of minus 5. I'll get this value, 4.778. And finally, determining the pH of this solution is not an issue. pH will just be 14 minus POH under standard condition. 14 minus 4.778, I'll get this value, 9.22. Now, I think what is important is, you notice these few steps that we are doing for calculation, it is just finding the pH of a weak base. So if I want to determine the pH of ammonia, the steps actually more or less is the same. I'll just use this formula to find OH minus concentration. Once I find OH minus concentration, then I can find pOH, then I can find pH. So Again, just to reiterate, what is important in terms of the pH of a salt solution is we will need to use the concept to try to link the salt to a conjugate base for this exercise. And a conjugate base is nothing more than a weak base. 
So therefore, we will use the formula involving finding the OH- concentration of a weak base, and then subsequently we can find pOH and we can find pH. So determining the pH of a salt is nothing more than determining the pH of a weak base. All right, so that was the discussion involving calculating the pH of a uh, salt solution. Now, if you are not so clear in terms of the concept of salt hydrolysis, then I think it is recommended for you to refer to a previous video that I've done describing salt hydrolysis in detail. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.